Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to look at the concept of glycogenesis and glycogenolysis. So what is glycogenesis? Glycogenesis is a process that involves the combustion of glucose to glycogen. So of course, when in this process, when glucose molecules, when glucose, when glucose molecules, when glucose molecules is converted into glycogen is converted into glycogen and the process is called glycogenesis and of course the reverse of the case when the glycogen for that breakdown generates when the glycogen breakdown to produce glucose then the process is called glycogenolysis so of course in this process this process it's usually taking place in the liver and the muscle cells. So that is glycogenesis. So then the next thing that we are going to look at is the glycogen itself. So glycogen is a storage form of glucose in animals. So when we take carbohydrate diets, and it's of course highly rich in glucose, so after the digestion, some of the carbohydrate will be sent to the other tissues of the body to generate energy. So if there is any extra glucose that is not needed for maintenance of the blood glucose level or the energy generation, of course, it will now be transfer or it will now transport it to the liver or muscle cells where it will be converted into glycogen. So the storage form of glucose in animals is the glycogen. And of course, this glycogen is stored either in the liver or muscle cells. And the quantity of this uh, glucose in the uh, muscle cells is far greater than that of the liver due to high, high muscle mass. And that is why, of course, the amount of the uh, of the glycogen in the muscle cells is about 250 grams, while that of the liver is 75 grams. And this glycogen is stored as a form of granules in the cytosols. And of course, we have, we have, apart from the storage products or macromolecules in the body, apart from glycose, there is also a fat, and all of them, they are producing energy, or they are all services of energy. But now let's look at what is the difference between the two. So fat generally cannot be rapidly mobilized to generate glucose and energy in the body. So that is why the far away, the fastest storage form of energy in the body is the glycogen because it can easily uh, mobilize and then break down to produce the glucose. And fat cannot generate energy in the absence of oxygen. So if there is no oxygen, then fat cannot actually generate energy. So that is why it is difficult to use it. And moreover, blend it requires a continuous supply of glucose in the body. It is constantly in need of glucose in the body, which come from the glycogen. So since the fat cannot produce glucose, so it means that if we cannot, or if our body cannot break down glycogen to generate glucose, so there is a possibility that the brain can cease function. So as a result of that, ladies and gentlemen, you should understand that glycogen is the fastest storage form of the macromolecules, which can easily be mobilized to generate energy. And of course, it can easily be mobilized to break down to generate glucose, which is constantly needed by the brain. And of course, the parts cannot produce glucose. So that is why we just look at the uh, two storage form of energy. So you can only use fats to as a source of energy when the glucose, sorry, when the glycogen is depleted. If there is no glucose, then the next thing the glycogen will be utilized. And if there is no glycogen, that is where the fat will be mobilized and starts uh, be generating a lot of, uh, of fatty acid and glycerol. And of course, for the brain, if there is no glucose, then it will switch off by utilizing ketone bodies in the body. So if there is no glucose, the brain can just manage 
to utilize ketone bodies in the brain. So now the next thing is the glycogenesis. So glycogenesis, as you said, is actually the intracellular synthesis of glycogen from glucose. So when glycogen is synthesized from when glycogen is synthesized from the glucose, then the process is called glycogenesis. And of course, glycogen synthesis occurs by the fat way that is distinctly different from the reversal of the glycogen breakdown. So therefore, the fat way of glycogen breaking down and glycogen synthesis as different or as separated pathways. There are different pathways and the main sites and the main sites and the steps where this glycogen synthesis takes place is uh, as follows. It usually takes place in the liver. So glycogen, glycogenesis, it usually takes place in the liver and the muscle cells. And of course, in the liver, the, there is about 8 to 10% of it is weights. Weight, and of course, in the muscles is about one to two percent, and most other cells might also to the minute amount of the glycogen. So, uh, it's of course in the liver and the muscle cells. So then the next thing is, uh, of course, the synthesis of this glycogen from glucose is the glycogenesis, and it usually takes place in the cytosol. So it's take place in the cytosol. And uh, of course, one of the main steps of this glycogen biosynthesis is actually you need a UTP, which is the uridine triphosphate, and is usually used in the activation of the glucose before it's being added in the growing chain of the glycogen. So this is the structure of the glycogen, and of course, the glycogen, from our basic knowledge, we know that it's made up of both the linear and the branch chain. So the linear chain, the linear chain of the glycogen is made up of alpha one four glycosidic bond, while for the branch chain of the glycogen is made up of alpha is made up of alpha one six glycosidic alpha one six glycosidic bond. So now let's look at the steps of this glycogenesis. So first, the steps of the glycogenesis, it started first with the glucose. So the glucose is converted into glucose phosphates. It's converted by an enzyme, either hexokinase or glucokinase. And of course, this hexokinase is usually found in the liver. So in the liver, this glucokinase the enzymes that will now convert the glucose into glucose cis phosphate. And of course, for the hexokinase, it is the enzyme that found in the liver, sorry, in the muscle cells and other extra hepatic tissues. So it's found in the, uh, in the muscles and other, it's found in the muscles and other extra hepatic tissues. So at this point, this glucose is converted into glucose cis phosphate. And once this glucose is converted into glucose cis phosphate, then another you know enzyme possible glucomutase will now change the position of the phosphate group from position six to position one. And that is why here glucose cis phosphate is converted into glucose one phosphate. So the word mutase here is very important. We should understand it's like a uh, mutation. So mutase, it means to change a position or to change something. So the glucose here, we have glucose cis phosphate. So the enzymes, it's actually involved in conversion of glucose one phosphate to, so the glucose cis phosphate to glucose one phosphate. And of course, the next thing is UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase enzymes, which now used to add or to activate the glucose by adding the UDP. So that is where here we have uridine diphosphates, uridine diphosphate glucose, which is the activated form, which is the activated form of the glucose. So after you have this, then what next? Of course, you have, you are going to add this uridine diphosphate into glycogen or we call it the glycogen primer. 
that is the remaining or some remnant of the glycogen in the body. Like for example, what does that mean? Generally, if you have glycogen in the body and it mobilizes in the body, it's not all, it's not every glucose from that glycogen that would be break down. There will be some remnant. So some remnant of it will be left. Some remnant of it will be left. So the remnant of the glycogen after the degradation of the glycogen is called glycogen. So this is like at the growing chain, the glycogen, or oh, we call it glycogen primer. So glycogen in or glycogen primer will now be actually added with the with an activated form of uh, urine and diphosphate using an enzyme called glycogen synthesis. So glycogen synthesis is an enzyme that have the ability to add the glucose at the same time by removing the UD field. So therefore, once the glucose is added, then we are now going to have uh, alpha-1,4 uh, uh, glucose cell residues, which can also be used to accommodate more of another glucose molecule. So therefore, at the end, we have the glycogen, and of course, we have a branching enzyme. So this branching enzyme is an enzyme that can add the glucose either in alpha, so they add alpha 1, 6, uh, alpha 1, 6 glycosidic pump. So at the end, this is how we generate uh, glycogen. So there is an element we should understand first. The steps require the use of the glucose, then the glucose will be activated to glucose phosphate using hexokinase or glucokinase. Then, of course, the one phosphates or the glucose one phosphate will now be activated using UDF glucose pyrophosphorylase and it will now be converted into uridine diphosphate glucose. And then the uridine diphosphate glucose will now be added to the growing chain, which is the glycogen. And at the end, we are going to have alpha 1 for glucose cell residue. And finally, we are going to have the glycogen. Using, of course, the branching enzymes, the glucose can be added to alpha 1, 6, glycosidic 1. That is where the branch point will be, uh, will be added. So then the next thing is, uh, look, let's look at how the reactions go more closely. So you see, as you said, we have glycogen primer or glycogen nitrate. Okay, and to initiate glycogenesis. That is why here after we have the glucose, ATP will be utilized. And um, of course, one phosphate group would be added. So that is why here we have an enzyme called glucokinase. This means that this reaction is taking place in the liver because of the presence of the enzyme glucokinase because it's only found in the liver. And then the next thing is the phosphate glucometers which transposition the glucose or the six phosphate to one phosphate. And then the next one is GIF, that is uridyl, uridyl transferase enzymes, which now add the UTP to the growing chain. So here we have the UDP glucose, which is the activated glucose. And of course, this is the glycogen primer, glycogen primer or glycogen, of course the glucose will now be added, and of course, the UDP will be removed using an enzyme called the glycogen synthesis. So this is the, uh, the glycogen, in, that is the glycogen primer, and then here, plus one. So the plus one here indicate that one glucose is successfully added here. So let's look at this very closely. So we have, as I said, the glucose is made out of, uh, sorry, the glycogen is made out of all the uh, uh, glucose, alpha oncoglycosidic one, which is our leveled uh, glucose residues. And then we also have the alpha one, which is glucosidic one. So you can level this using carbon 14 isotope so that you have, you, you can take the image and the picture of what exactly happened. So glycogen synthase transfers glucose from UDP glucose to the non-reducing end of the glycogen to form alpha-1-6 glyco, uh, 
from alpha 1 to linkages. Then the branching enzymes, which is known as amylo 1 4 to amylo, sorry, amylo 1, amylo alpha 1 to 2, 1 cis transglucosidase, then in bracket glucosyl alpha O6 transferase. So that is the branching enzymes. So these branching enzymes, after forming, they get after uh, adding the glucose, then you have what you call um, using an enzyme called glycogen synthase. Then it will now be added. And of course, when there is another molecules of glucose, then these branching enzymes will now be used to translocate. To translocate, like for example, now yeah, look at it here. At this point, we have the linear form here and we have the linear form. So you see this these fats, all this fat basically. Look at it from here. It has been transferred to a new position at alpha 1,6 glycosidic one. And the enzyme that this that, that did this is called the branching enzyme. So the branching enzymes have both the, the, the transferase activity as well as the glucosidase as well as the uh, transglucosidase activity. So therefore, it will now uh, remove this, then transfer it, and then form new alpha 1,6 bond. And that is the major function of the branching enzyme. So overall reaction of glycogenesis, the glucose or the glycogen primer plus glucose plus 2 ATP, it will now generate glycogen plus 1 plus 2 ATP, sorry, ATP plus inorganic phosphate. And of course, since it is a uh, synthetic factory, it is an anabolic factory, so it needs an input of energy. So it means that for the glycogen to be generated, for any molecules of the glucose to be added into the glycogen primer, we need to utilize two molecules of ATP. So two molecules of ATP are utilized. And of course, you can clearly see the steps where the ATP are utilized. Remember that we have a point where UTP, so UTP is equivalent to one ATP, and then also we have a point where the glucose is converted into glucose six phosphate. So these are those are the two steps where we use ATP. So these are the two steps. The UTP is equivalent to ATP, and then we have ATP where the glucose is converted into glucose six phosphates. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is where we are going to stop for the glycogen or the dice or the glycogenesis. So, if there is any question, then you can actually ask your question on the, the comment section. And please, if this is the first time you are coming, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And in the next video, we are going to discuss about the glycogenesis. That is a breaking down of glycogen into glucose.